right. All right. What would you like to know? Talk to me a little bit about uh, when I was young. Or? When you were young and you started fishing in uh, in I'm, Crystal River, Homosassa. I struck right down there at, uh, in front of this uh, Stokes' fish house down in there. He was he could fish from there right on down anywhere you wanted to, and we used to catch anything and everything in there until that river got polluted and they started digging it up and digging canals in it and it's just kept getting worse and worse so it's it's just polluted in there now and we had 150 yards of net when we first started and that's each person had that many on a pull skiff didn't have no outboard motor and we, we pull skiff and when we take the ice boat out we went down to, to uh, South Line and North Line Creek and we anchored that boat up. And we had three to four skills. We would just go at night and fish up in North and South Line Creek. Primarily, what kind of fish were you mullet. looking for? You were mullet. Well, we could catch mullet, redfish, and trout. And and uh, and in December they closed mullet fishing for rowing, which I think would still would be a good thing instead of the weekend closure because it would give them time to row out. And give us new, a new stock of mullet. Now, back in the uh, early 90s, they imposed a net ban. Yeah. Tell me how that impacted you and the the commercial fishery off of our coast here. Well, it just it just ruined the fishing for us. I mean, it, it even hurt it hurt my social security because we went from three thousand, four thousand pounds of fish down to. 300 pounds, you might say, and that that is my last 10 years on the Social Security, and and it just it just knocked me back. So I, I could go out and do uh, other nets, and make one strike, and make a hundred make a hundred dollars off of one strike, just run it overboard one time, in the, in the run season. And now you can run it overboard one time, and I run it off four or five times the other day, and I got uh, less than 200 pounds. With these things here, and if I'd have had the big nets, I could have caught 500. Tell me a little uh, bit about these uh, these nets you have here. They're sains you were telling me a few minutes ago. Tell me tell me uh, how big they are. Tell me a little bit about what they're made of. Um, they're made out of nylon. They take the monofilament away from us. We had to, had to let us have the monofilament in this here that caught good. But these here nylon, we went up with them. They thought that was the worst thing I could put on us. So they, uh, they just tried to put us out of business. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. But why, I don't know, because we didn't catch nothing but mullet. Well, it, when it's in the season we caught redfish in, in, uh, let's see, it's in uh, November. No, let's see. It was in August. We took August, the small run of reds would come through here before they dug them canals up there. They used to run down the coast, north and south. And we'd take a month there and we'd catch redfish. We'd catch them five to eight hundred pounds a day per boat. And then then in in, the, in December we'd fish for trout and redfish when the close season was on the month of replenish. Tell me a little bit about your boat. These are very specific to fishing for mullet specifically. Tell me a little bit about this boat. You told me you, you made it by hand. Yeah, yeah. We started out making them and whenever we first started building them, they, you had to keep them up front to go and steer them around. Now then they got them perfected to where you can can turn either way and run it slow. How long is this boat? It's 23, six. What do you got, probably a six foot beam? It's got, uh, it's a little over seven foot wide. A little bit over seven foot yes, wide. It's got 20 inch sides on it where it's low and the wind won't catch it to where you can take your net up in if it's blowing a little bit. And it has flare in it to keep the water from flowing inside your boat so bad. And it's got rake on it to where it can run it aground. This boat you can run it aground. Is that right? You have to worry about running them aground mm -hmm. out there in the wintertime. Yeah, that motor will run, run it until you get stuck. Mr. Head, tell me a little bit about when you first began uh, your your fishing career 
and tell me where that where that started. I fished down there we on the ice boat, and uh, we originally started fishing down there. Daddy and, and another fella, I was on the boat. I was a little bitty fella, and I stayed on the boat. And I had me a throw line that you throw. And I caught two trout while Dad and them was down there striking a bunch of mullet. And his partner that come in there, he was teasing me about it. I was a little old bitty boy, and he teased me. He says, you going to give me part of them trout, ain't you? I said, no, sir, I ain't giving you none of my trout. <laughs> I was a little old bitty thing about like Gia in there. Yeah. A little bit older, not much. Yeah, I was born and raised on that water there. I was born down there by Homo Sasser there. You've yeah. seen the river go through a lot of changes, haven't oh, you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, I, you wouldn't even know the difference between out there now than what it was when I was a kid. It's just a different world out there. It's washed away and changed. Even the rivers have changed their course. And the islands that was out there, they have just washed away. I can show you just nothing but the rock bottom where the islands used to be, where it used to take two 350 yard nets to round them up. They're not even there. Norwest bird cheese gone. Bird cheese gone. Uh, I don't know, I can name you several of them if I take time, but, I, but it, it's just washing away out there. <laughs>